In this video, I'm creating the all-time NBA draft first round. What does this mean? I'm going to name the best NBA players ever picked at each draft slot from 1 to 30. Why 30? Because the NBA's first round has had 30 picks since 2005. Some of the players listed weren't first round picks in their era, but they're still eligible. It's pretty straightforward. No offense to the LGBTQ community. Without further ado, let's begin. The best first overall pick ever, LeBron James. The most polarizing player in NBA history. No matter where you land on the LeBron scale, nobody can deny his ability and greatness on the basketball court. He's been an MVP caliber player for almost 20 straight years and has the best combination of longevity and production of any player ever, with only Kareem coming close. Even if you don't think he's as good as Jordan, he still has an argument for being the GOAT and is at worst a top two player ever. He has four rings and four finals MVPs, which is a lot, but it still kind of undersells how dominant he was in the postseason for most of his career. He had several historically dominant post season runs like 2009, 2017, and 2018, and without a ring due to bad luck and factors out of his control. I want to live in a world where Kyrie's kneecap never exploded in 2015 and KD never went to Golden State in 2016. The best second overall pick ever, Kevin Durant. There's some competition here from Bill Russell and Jerry West, but ultimately I went with Durant, who is arguably the most complete scorer in NBA history. Of course, with KD, his legacy will always be heavily impacted by his decision to join Golden State during his prime, and that kind of muddies the waters a bit. But like with LeBron, even if you dislike KD, you can't deny his prodigious talent. He is literally unstoppable as a scorer and has been a consensus top two or three player in the world for over a decade now. If he is able to win a ring with Brooklyn, he will skyrocket up people's all-time list. The best third overall pick ever, Michael Jordan. MJ is not only viewed by many as the best basketball player ever, he's viewed as arguably the best athlete in sports history. There's not much more for me to add here about MJ that hasn't already been said millions of times. He has probably the best peak stretch in NBA history, he combined his freakish physical gifts with a technical brilliance and a psychotic mindset that, quite frankly, has never been seen anywhere else. He took over fourth quarters on a more consistent basis than anybody else and never had an objectively bad playoff series even when he lost. This is why, as much as it pains me to say this as a LeBron fan, I've come to recently view Michael Jordan as the GOAT. He was just too damn good. Although I still contend anybody who pretends like he's leaps and bounds ahead of LeBron is wrong, I'm gonna inject a marijuana into my ass now. Thanks. The best fourth overall pick ever, Chris Paul. CP3's place in history is interesting. He's been an amazing player for his entire career and is absolutely beloved by advanced stats due to his incredible efficiency and assist to turnover ratio. He undeniably makes every team he is on much better. Yet, for the most part, postseason success has largely eluded him. It's not as if he's a terrible playoff performer either. He's individually been very good. But injuries, and perhaps being a little too unselfish at times, have resulted in just one finals appearance and two conference finals appearances in 16 seasons. Personally, I think CP3 is underrated and is an easy top 5 point guard of all time selection. In fact, I'd say the only two point guards who are clearly above him at this point are Magic and Steph. The best fifth overall pick ever, Kevin Garnett. This was a much tougher choice than I had originally thought, with guys like Charles Barkley, Scottie Pippen, and Dwayne Wade also being fifth overall picks. But in the end, I went with KG. There was really nothing KG couldn't do on the basketball court. At his best, he was giving you about 22 or 23 points per game with elite rebounding, amazing passing for a man his size, and elite defense. His prime years in Minnesota were largely wasted on bad teams, and by the time he finally won a ring in Boston, he was still very good, but not at the level he was before. The common what-if people use with KG is how many rings would he have had if he had switched places with Tim Duncan in San Antonio. Nobody will ever know, but KG was a monster, and would have been even scarier if he had been drafted into today's NBA, where a lot of his long twos would have been turned into threes. The best sixth overall pick ever, Larry Bird. A pretty easy choice here. Larry Legend is a consensus top five to 10 player of all time. One of the rare players who was instantly elite and remained that way pretty much their entire career. Of course, with Bird, he dealt with back problems that shortened his career, but every year in his prime, the Celtics were title contenders thanks to his all-around brilliance. Sure, he had great teammates, but Bird was the engine that made Boston go. As I've said in other videos, the only hang-up with Bird for me, besides his back issues, is that his playoff career isn't quite as great as people remember. But nonetheless, he was arguably the best player in the world for half a decade before a guy named Jordan showed up. Unrelated, but when you watch Bird play, he's strikingly similar to Nikola Jokic, who is who I think Bird would be most similar to if he played in today's NBA. I swear I'm not just saying that because both are white. I hate racism. The best seventh overall pick ever, Stephen Curry. For as much as I despise Warriors fans, I've come to admire how impactful Steph really is offensively. You can make a great argument that no player in NBA history, not even Jordan, LeBron, or Shaq, puts more pressure on a defense than Steph does at all times. A large part of Steph's greatness and 
effectiveness is scaring opponents with what he might do due to his unmatched range. Even leaving him alone for a split second from 30 feet out can result in a three-pointer. Even if he doesn't have a great shooting night, he still opens up so much for his teammates. The only thing Steph really lacks is two things. One, longevity, as he got a late start due to injuries, but he's certainly made up for lost time since then. And two, a finals MVP. If he wins another ring or two while dominating in the finals to earn some finals MVPs, he could go down as the best point guard of all time over Magic, potentially. The best eighth overall pick ever, Robert Parrish. The Chief wasn't a sexy player. He didn't have many memorable highlights, but he was as steady as one could be as a second and then later third option on some great Celtics teams of the 80s. Parrish's biggest accomplishment is how he played 21 years in the NBA and was an objectively positive contributor for about 17 of them. He was never a superstar, but he was a lock to give you around 17 points, 10 rebounds, and 2 blocks a game for about 15 years. He finished his Hall of Fame career with 9 All-Star appearances, 2 All-NBA teams, and 4 rings. Not bad for a player drafted out of Little Centenary College in Louisiana. Most importantly though, he was known for having a very large phallus, which is absolutely inspirational to men like me with tiny wieners. The best ninth overall pick ever, Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk is one of the very rare NBA superstars that is well liked by everybody nowadays. But it wasn't always that way for the in-sync lookalike out of Germany. His rookie year was disappointing, and even as he evolved into an elite NBA player in the early to mid-2000s, he constantly fought against the dreaded soft label every Euro had to face. There were also lots of playoff disappointments in his prime that didn't help matters, but everything changed forever during his magical 2011 playoff run, which resulted in a title and finals MVP. What made Dirk so great was that he never tried to do more than he could. He knew his bread and butter was scoring and jump shooting, so he leaned into that. He was a good, not great rebounder, an average passer and defender at best, but his teams in his prime always won a shitload of games with him leading the way regardless, and that has to count for something. The best 10th overall pick ever, Paul Pierce. This was a very tough choice between Pierce and two-time finals MVP Willis Reed, but I inevitably went with Pierce because I couldn't ignore how much more volume he produced compared to Reed. Whereas fellow 1998 pick Dirk Nowitzki has become beloved over the years and into retirement, Pierce has become a human meme of sorts. Nevertheless, Pierce, despite being a lame most of the time, could really fucking play. He made 10 All-Star games, 4 All-NBA teams, won a ring and finals MVP in 2008, and finished with over 26,000 career points. Sure, he was never a truly elite player even in his prime, and he needed a super team to finally win a ring, but he averaged 25, 7, and 4 a game for the better part of a decade and was known for hitting big shots late in close games. He also got stabbed a shitload of times at a club once and shook it off to play all 82 games that season, which really doesn't get talked about enough in my opinion. The best 11th overall pick ever, Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller held the title of best shooter ever before Ray Allen came along and it was well warranted. NBA fans seem to be divided on Miller the player. His announcing is another story. Some believe he deserves major props for his longevity, postseason performance, and clutch shots, while others point out that he was mostly a one-dimensional player who never won anything. For me, I don't think Miller was quite as good as his advanced stats suggest, but his skill set would be immensely valuable in any era, especially today. I also like how he had an edge to him and wasn't afraid of anybody. I think, in general, he is pretty properly rated and is an easy choice as the best 11th overall pick ever. The best 12th overall pick ever, Julius Irving. Dr. J is arguably the most liked NBA player ever due to his fan-friendly style of play. It says a lot that a young Michael Jordan was compared to Dr. J early in his career. Dr. J J's best years all came in the ABA, which led to some inflated stats due to the league not really giving a fuck about defense. Once the ABA folded and Doc made the transition to the NBA, his numbers unsurprisingly dropped and he was never as good as he was in the ABA. But he was still a premier player of the late 70s and early 80s alongside Bird, Magic, Moses, and Kareem. He won an MVP in 1981, but didn't win a title until 1983 with the famous faux fi 76ers. Dr. J was a guy who did everything pretty well despite not having a great jump shot and was still an objective good player until the day he retired. The best 13th overall pick ever, Kobe Bryant. I still contend that Kobe is the most overrated player in NBA history due to constantly being in convos he doesn't belong in, but he was still a legendary player. That kind of sums up the Kobe conundrum. He is overrated and a legend at the same time. His career was incredible, yet he could never escape the shadow of Michael Jordan, just like LeBron. Kobe's 13-year run from 2001 to 2013, where he averaged 28-6-5, and is overlooked in my opinion, and it's also wrong to say he was simply careful carried by Shaq for his first three rings. Shaq was the best player, sure, but Kobe did his part, especially in 2001 and 2002. He wasn't a great NBA Finals performer, but his playoff performances in the conference playoffs to get LA to three straight finals from 2008 to 2010 were great. I was never a Kobe fan, but I've grown to appreciate his game more as the years have progressed. Rest in peace. The best 14th overall pick ever, Clyde Drexler. Perhaps no player's career has been more impacted by Michael Jordan than Drexler. He was the clear-cut second-best shooting guard of his era behind the famously responsible gambler.
Drexler was basically MJ Light. He was really good at everything that MJ was great at, which still gives you a hell of a player. Of course, people most remember MJ kicking Drexler's ass in the 1992 finals, but that's a little unfair to Drexler in my opinion. Drexler's biggest problem was settling for threes even though he wasn't a great shooter and also being kind of soft, but nevertheless, he would eventually get his elusive ring in 1995 after being traded to Houston. If not for MJ's parents having sex to create MJ, it would be Drexler who would probably have another ring and be remembered as the top shooting guard of the 1990s. The best 15th overall pick ever, Giannis Antetokounmpo. This was not as clear cut of a selection as one might think, as Steve Nash and Kawhi Leonard are also 15th overall pick. But Giannis clears Nash in terms of impact, especially after his Tutter run last year. The real decision came down to Kawhi or Giannis, and I went with Giannis due to durability and potential. Giannis is only 27 and already building a top 5 to 10 player of all time type resume. It was tough though, since Kawhi is a truly ridiculous postseason performer, but he just can't stay healthy and doesn't have the volume totals. Giannis, meanwhile, looks primed to dominate the league for the next 10 years at least. It took a lot of luck for him to win a ring last year, but he finally overcame his playoff demons, which might be more important. He can't shoot, but it almost doesn't matter since he uses his physical gifts to impose his will on the opponent more than any player since peak Shaq. He's pretty fucking good. The best 16th overall pick ever, John Stockton. As a player, Stockton was as consistent and durable as they come. He was never a great scorer. In fact, he never once scored more than 34 points in any game, and he almost played 1,700 NBA games. His bread and butter was running the pick and roll with Carl Sandusky, which led to many wins and tons of assists, almost 16,000 actually. He also had quick hands and great reflexes to be the all-time steals leader. However, his biggest weakness as a player was that he refused to take shots, which ironically is also his biggest weakness as a person. His efficiency fell even more than usual in the playoffs, which is a big reason why he never won a ring despite countless chances. Despite his consistency, great counting numbers, and efficiency stats, he was never a truly dominant player at any point. He was like an A student, but not an A-plus student. But he's still far and away the best 16th overall pick ever. The best 17th overall pick ever, Sean Kemp. Kemp was one of the most exciting players of the 1990s and even played really well in the 96 finals against the Bulls. He made six All-Star games and three All-NBA teams, but he should have been even better than he was. Unfortunately, the Rain Man suffered from Zion Williamson disease, which is to say he enjoyed stuffing his fucking face with a shitload of food more than playing basketball. Kemp should have ended up having a much better career than he actually did, but his actual career was still pretty good. The best 18th overall pick ever, Joe Dumars. Dumars is a name that kind of gets lost to history. When people think of the Bad Boy Pistons, it's either usually Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer, or Dennis Rodman. Dumars, on the other hand, was kind of like the Clay Thompson to Isaiah Steph. He wasn't a flashy player, but he was steady and clutch, evidenced by him taking home the 1989 Finals MVP. Dumars was also known as an elite defender and a guy who MJ singled out as the guy who gave him the hardest time on that end. He was never a superstar, but he was really good. The best 19th overall pick ever, Tiny Archibald. Archibald is most well known for leading the NBA in both points per game and assists per game in the same season, which he did in 1973. His career can be divided into two parts. His pre-Achilles tear years from 1971 to 1977, where he put up great stats and made several All-NBA teams but never really won anything, and his post-Achilles tear years from 1979 to 1984, largely with the Celtics, where he won a title, sacrificing his stats behind guys like Bird, Parrish, and Maxwell. He deserves more props for overcoming an Achilles injury in the 1970s, in my opinion. The best 20th overall pick ever, Larry Nance. No, 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 not Larry Nance Jr., Larry Nance, his father. Nance Sr. is an extremely overlooked player who made several All-Star games and all defensive teams while averaging a very respectable 17-8-3 with two blocks per game for his career. In fact, I'm not sure why this guy wasn't more highly thought of. He could score efficiently, rebound well, pass a little bit, and defend pretty well. He kind of falls into that Sean Marion tier of forgotten guys who just did everything really, really well. The best 21st overall pick ever, Michael Finley. Finley is perhaps best remembered for his early 2000s years in Dallas alongside a young Dirk and Steve Nash. He played major minutes, three times leading the league in minutes per game, and like several other players on this list, could do a lot of things really well but was never a dominant player or a superstar. As his career progressed in the post-Dallas years, he became a role player for the Spurs, even winning a ring in 2007. Good for you, Mike. Everybody please golf clap. Thank you. The best 22nd overall pick ever, Truck Robinson. Let me start out by saying that this motherfucker's name was Truck. Imagine that. Imagine a guy named Truck making first team all NBA today. Well, that's what Robinson actually did in 1978 while averaging 22 points per game and leading the league in rebounds. Okay, so his actual first name isn't actually Truck. It's Leonard, but Truck is so much more badass. There haven't been a lot of great 22nd overall picks in NBA history, so he will have to do. Long live Truck, the best 23rd overall pick ever, Alex English. Alex English was the leading scorer in the NBA for the 1980s. A pretty cool distinction. He's in the Hall of Fame, made eight all-star games, three all-NBA teams, and won the scoring title in 1983. From 1982 
1982 to 1989, he averaged 27, 5, and 5 per game for some good, not great Nuggets teams. Sure, he wasn't a great defender, but who gives a fuck? He was playing in cold-ass Denver. Nobody was paying to watch him play defense. He was there to score the fucking rock, and he did that at an elite level. The best 24th overall pick ever, Kyle Lowry. This was a close pick between Lowry and Terry Porter, but I ultimately went with Lowry due to his voluptuous giant ass. I mean, uh, fuck, that, that wasn't supposed to come out, huh? How do you delete this? Lowry didn't become a regular starter in the league until his fifth season and gradually improved to become arguably the best player in Raptors franchise history, making six All-Star games and an All-NBA team with them. Oh yeah, he also won a ring there in 2019, outplaying Steph Curry in the title-clinching Game 6 road win. He might flop a lot, but he's a good player. The best 25th overall pick ever, Mark Price. Oh god, what a scrappy hard worker Mark Price was, am I right? He quickly emerged as one of the better point guards in the league in the late 80s and early 90s. He was a dead-eye shooter, no offense to Fetty Wap. He was essentially John Stockton light and just did a lot of things really well. He was also a guy you'd love marrying your daughter, similar to Cooper Cup. Price kind of had a short career though and quickly fell off after turning 30, but he's arguably the second best player the Cavaliers have ever had behind LeBron. That's got to count for something, right? The best 26th overall pick ever, Vladi Divac. Divac was known as a flopper, but he was a really solid all-around player. He was a great passer for a big man and got a ton of steals. He was also arguably the best player on the Lakers in between the Magic and Kobe Shaq years. Of course, he'll always be remembered for being traded for Kobe before the 96 draft, but he had a great second act on some really great and fun Kings teams that always felt short in the playoffs. He also always had a 5 o'clock shadow, which puts him up a notch in my opinion. The best 27th overall pick ever, Dennis Rodman. Rodman might be the best player in NBA history who actively went out of his way to not try and score the ball. He finished his career with two All-Star games, seven rebounding titles, five rings, eight All-Defensive teams, two All-NBA team selections, and two Defensive Player of the Year awards. He devoted all of his time and energy into rebounding and defending, and also doing weird shit to fuck with opponents. He's arguably the best pound-for-pound -pound rebounder in NBA history, especially on the offensive boards to give his teams extra possessions. He will always be a memorable character, and his brain should absolutely be studied after he dies, which hopefully isn't for a very long time. The best 28th overall pick ever, Tony Parker. Hide your wives. Just kidding. Kind of. Parker was a consistent presence during the glory years of the Spurs, although he took a while to hit his stride behind Duncan. He never really put up superstar numbers, but he was extremely quick and knew how to get into the lane despite his smaller size and stature. He made six All-Star games, four All-NBA teams, won four rings, and even won Finals MVP in 2007 against an overmatched Cavs team featuring LeBron and a bunch of Make-A-Wish kids. He probably would have put up better individual stats on other teams in his prime, but I'm sure he's content with his rings and legacy in San Antonio. The best 29th overall pick ever, Dennis Johnson. Johnson's career was interesting. He started out on some contending Sonics teams in the late 70s, even winning a ring and finals MVP in 1979 before being shipped off to Phoenix for three years, where he had his best statistical seasons but didn't win anything. Then he got traded again this time to Boston, where he's perhaps best remembered as the scrappy lead point guard. His individual stats were solid, not great, but everybody who played with and against him swears by him. In the end, he's in the Hall of Fame, made five All-Star games, two All-NBA teams, nine All-Defensive teams, and won three rings in addition to his aforementioned finals MVP. The best 30th overall pick ever, Jimmy Butler. Finally, we close out this video with Jimmy Butler at the 30th spot. Butler wasn't much to write home about his first several years, but in year four, he really took off. And since then, he's been a consistent 20 points per game guy who contributes in every facet of the game. He's made six all-star games, four all-NBA teams, five all-defensive teams, and had an all-time great finals performance in 2020 with Miami in a losing effort. He's carved out a hell of a career for himself, has been way better than anybody, including me, ever thought he'd be. The only real thing he has left to accomplish is a ring, which is still a possibility considering the Miami team he's on right now is really good. We shall see.